going to continue this week our conversation on spiritual gifts, but what we're going to do, we're actually going to answer questions about gifts and purposes. So what, what we're going to think about, uh, for example, how can you figure out what your gifts are? Spiritual gifts, natural gifts. How do you balance between your spiritual and your natural gifts? And I'm going to share with you five things that you can uh, that you can use to help move you or at least get you thinking about your purpose and how it all ties together. So grab your Bibles, grab your notes, get ready. It's time for the Bible Study Club. Well, good evening and welcome to the Bible Study Club. My name is Clarence Haynes, and on behalf of my wife and our entire team here, we just want to first of all just say thank you uh, for joining and tuning in here uh, this, this Thursday night. Uh, for those of you who may not be aware, we actually meet here every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, and there's three things that we want you to be mindful of or aware of, because this, these are our goals that we're trying to accomplish here in the Bible Study Club. The first thing is we want you to open God's word. That's the, the first objective here. Uh, the second is to get you to discover truth in God's word. And then third, we want to help you apply it to your life because it's in the application that's where the real transformation and change begins to happen in your life. So if this is your first time or if you have not done so yet, please make sure you like and follow us uh, on Facebook or like and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel just to keep up to date with what's happening in the Bible Study Club. All right, so now it is time to figure out who can remember what last week's verse of the week was. Um, and uh, so make sure you go ahead and put that in the chat. I see we got some quick ones in here tonight. <laughs> but uh, last week's verse of the week. And by the way, if you got the video that I sent out last week on Ephesians chapter two, and you really enjoyed that, just give me a thumbs up um, if you like that video. I think uh, we got some good response from that. Um, so let's see. Let me say some hellos out here. So hello to to Sharon Jones, thank you for joining us, to uh, Doris Buble and Frank, I see Frank out there, hello, and to Paula Short, and uh, let's see, we got um, Dimitri Kova, who's gonna be joining us tonight as a as a moderator, so let's welcome Dimitri, give her a hand for doing that. Um, Norman, hello, and Barbara, now let's see who got the verse right, I saw Frank had it right, and Eva and Kathleen, Ernestine, June, Barbara's got it. Fantastic. So last week's verse of the week was, Shay has it. Thank you, Shay. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus to do good works. I'm sorry, to do good things. He planned for us from long ago. Um, so I want to thank you for joining us. And now this is our verse of the week this week, it's coming out of Romans 12, 6. The, the area I primarily want you to focus on is the first part of that verse. We're going to really dig into that tonight. But Romans 12, 6, reading out of the New Living Translation, says, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. So this is our verse of the week, Romans chapter 12, verse six. And I'm excited about that because we're gonna really uh, dig into that tonight. Also, as we go through, make sure you put your questions and comments in the chat. Um, and as you know, if, if you've never been here before, we'll go through our teaching and then we'll address the questions and comments 
uh, at the end. And if this is your first time watching, please make sure you let us know that, hey, you're, this is your first time and let us know where you are watching from. We always just wanna give you a nice hello uh, to, uh, to welcome you into the Bible study club. All right, so let's get ready and let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. God, I pray that as we would dig into your word and, and learn more, God, that you would give us ears to hear, uh, minds to understand. I pray, Father, that you would take this truth and make it very real to everyone listening. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Now, if these if these are blessings or I'm sorry, if these uh, sessions are a blessing to you, then please don't hesitate to like and share them with your friends and family. Well, tonight we're continuing our series. Uh, last week we started looking at connecting or rather how does your gift or your gifts connect to your purpose? And so we want to start looking at that tonight, uh, part two of connecting my gifts with my purpose. And what we really want to focus on tonight is last week, as you know, when we finished up, we had a series of questions that came through. And so I'm kind of building or focusing tonight's teaching based on those questions. And I think that'll help us um, learn more and understand more about this particular topic. And so the first question I want to throw out, um, which came in last week was, how do you distinguish between a natural gift and a spiritual one. So this is the first place we're going to start, and we're going to turn to our verse of the week. So if you have your Bibles, let's go into Romans chapter 12, and we're going to start at verse number six. And it says, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. I'm going to read the whole thing, then we'll come back and comment. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is teaching other, I'm sorry, if your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage, be encouraging. Um, if it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. So that's Romans 12 for this week. Now, a couple of things on this, this listing here. First of all, when Paul was writing this, this list is not really meant to be an exhaustive list. What do I mean by that? Meaning that these are not the only gifts that God gives, these ones here, and then that's it. That's not really what Paul was illustrating here. Paul was kind of making this more an example or an illustration of some of the types of gifts that God gives. And the first thing to understand is that every gift that a person ever has is always by God's grace. That's the first thing I want you to understand here. And the other part I want you to focus on is back in verse six, it says, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. God has given and put in all of us the ability to do, notice the word there, certain things well. So what does that mean? Here's what this means. Every single person who is born, God puts into that person a gift, a propensity to do something well. So if you are listening to me, there is something that you do well because God has put that inside of you. This is more, and I'm speaking here specifically about more natural giftings, because this certain thing well that you do applies whether you are a Christian or not. God has given you the ability to do certain things well. You might call these natural gifts, you might call these talents, but these are things that you do well. Some people might have artistic talent or musical talent or leadership talent. And if you look at some of the gifts listed there, sometimes these can apply to natural or gifts or natural talents. 
So for example, someone might just be naturally generous in helping others or serving others. That might be a natural gift that they have, or someone might have a natural ability to lead other people. All right. So these are natural gifts or talents. So here's my first thought that I want you to understand. How then do you define what is a natural gift? And so here's how you here's how you define this. A natural gift is an ability that God has placed in you that does not require the assistance of the Holy Spirit for the gift to operate in you. Okay, so in other words, if it's a natural gift, and this is why this applies to someone who's a believer or an unbeliever, it doesn't matter. There is a natural gift is something that God has given you an ability to do certain things well, that you can operate in that gift, regardless of whether you're a Christian or not, and regardless of without rather the assistance of the Holy Spirit. So let me go back for a little bit. Take a look at Psalms chapter 139, uh, verse 13 and 14. And I'm reading this from the NIV. It says, for you created me, I'm sorry, my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So think about this. When God was knitting you together in your mother's womb, which we've all been knit together, by God's grace, God knitted into your personality, into your characteristics, into who you are. God knitted into that the ability to do things well. And the truth of the matter is these natural abilities, these natural gifts, these natural talents, they can operate in your life regardless of whether you follow God or not. And let me give you an example of a natural gift. And I'll use a, a very natural gift. <laughs> For example, singing. Here's the facts, folks. Anybody can learn how to sing. I know you're saying, wait a second, I've heard some people sing. They can't sing. That's true. Everybody can't learn how to sing well, <laughs> but everybody, anybody can learn how to sing. Anybody can learn how to, to carry a tune or to hear a note or sing a note or anybody can learn how to do that. However, there are some people that are blessed with absolutely incredible singing voices that you can't create on your own. You know, having a great singing voice is something that either you have it or you don't. Either God knit that into your DNA or he didn't. Okay. And the truth of the matter is a person can operate naturally in this gift of singing. I'm just using that as an example because there's other gifts that apply. A person can operate in this gift whether or not they follow God or not. Think about it. Think about how many fantastic and awesome and incredible singers they are. there are. And some of them don't even know God. Some of them curse God but yet God has knitted into their DNA an ability to do something well. And this applies to not just a singing gift, this can be a, a writing gift or a speaking gift or a leading gift or a creative mind or an artistic mind or the ability to design or the ability, all of these things. God knits something inside of you that uh, gives you the ability to do certain things well. There are people who can excel in their profession and have no desire, no interest, no anything about following after God or following his heart, okay? So there's natural gifts. Now, remember, as we said last week, and if you didn't hear last week, you should go back and listen to it. Natural gifts by themselves, they cannot accomplish spiritual purposes. However, that does not mean natural gifts cannot be operated in. OK, they just can't accomplish spiritual purposes. All right. So you want to understand that. Now, as we said last week, I just want to reiterate this. When you follow God, what he does is he anoints the natural gift and uses it to accomplish a supernatural or spiritual purpose. Now, I want to go back to Romans chapter 12 for a moment, because here's where this 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 whole thing shifts on a natural versus spiritual gift. 
Paul says, if God has given you the gift, then use it. And that word is a simple if, right? So here's what this means. When God gives you a natural gift, we control how we use it. In other words, you determine what you are going to do with the natural gift, the thing that you are able to do well, you control how you're going to use that because that's built into your DNA. So if you can sing, then you determine whether you're going to sing for God or sing for the world. Totally up to you. It's your choice, but God doesn't remove the gift from you. It's a natural gift. It's built into your DNA. It's by his grace. And if remember, we talked about grace a little while oh, a little while ago. Grace is not is God giving to you something that you really don't deserve. You didn't earn it. Um, it's something that God graciously gave to you. But you determine how you're going to use the gift. And I want to give you an example here. I was um, this is a gentleman. His name is and Andre Norman. Um, and Andre, just going to read this. He was sentenced to over 100 years in prison. Uh, he was convicted of everything from attempted murder to rioting. When he was in jail, he became one of the top gang leaders in the entire Massachusetts prison system. But while he was in prison, he happened to have an epiphany and he decided in prison that, you know what, I need to change my life around. And so at the moment where he had this epiphany, now think about it, he's, he's a gang leader, but at that moment he was also illiterate. And so the first thing he did was he taught himself how to read. The second thing he did was he got involved in anger management classes at the prison to help him with that. And he also earned his GED. And this was all part of him turning his life around. After 14 years, after serving 14 years, he was released from prison and he went and he started his own business and he even taught at the London Business School. Now, why am I sharing the story with you? Here's the, the why. Here's what Andre said. He said that the skills and the abilities that were necessary to be a gang leader are oddly enough, the same skills and abilities that make small business owners successful. What am I telling you? God knits into you natural abilities. You have to determine how you're going to use the abilities that God has given you. In other words, the gift that God has put in you, it can accomplish a godly purpose or it can accomplish your own selfish purpose. Totally up to you. See, God knits into you by his grace the ability to do certain things well. Natural gifts that we have to decide how to use. Now, when it comes to what you have to offer, there's, there's three things I want you to understand. Number one, that everybody's gift has value. Whatever God has put in you is valuable. But the other thing you need to understand is that whatever God has put in you is necessary. So somebody needs your gift that God has put into you, natural and spiritual. We're going to talk about spiritual gifts in just a moment. Um, and the third thing I want you to remember is this. Don't ever compare your gift to someone else's. In other words, don't think that someone else is 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 has more to offer or they they're more gifted so they have greater value. That is absolutely not true. Whatever God has put in you has great value and it's necessary. So remember that. Now, I want you to understand this. There is no such thing as something no gift that's insignificant or too small. If you remember, there's a story in Mark chapter 12 about this widow and 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 then an offering was being taken and all of these high and mighty men we'll use that term uh they were bringing in their offering and they were dumping in large sums of money and then this widow came and all she had was two little mites and she put that in the offering and and, and remember what jesus said she said that the widow gave more than the others that had, because they were giving out of their excess, she was giving everything that she had. 
So don't compare your gift. Don't think it's too small. Someone may have lots of gifts, but they're not really using them. Maybe they have one, maybe they have three gifts, but they're only using one and they're kind of neglecting the others. And maybe God has given you one thing that you can do really well, but you're giving it all to him. So don't worry about if someone else you think has more gifts than you. It's not important. What are you doing with the gift that God has given you? And we're going to talk more about that next week, by the way. Now, let's turn to spiritual gifts because we just spent some time talking about natural. So here's a spiritual gift. A spiritual gift is a gift that can only operate with the assistance or the help of the Holy Spirit. In other words, if the Spirit of God does not enable that gift to function, that gift ceases to function. A natural gift, you can function with or without the help of the Holy Spirit. A spiritual gift, you cannot. The Holy Spirit does not help you, the gift stops. And let me give you a great example of this, because if you look in the New Testament, I'll give you a few. There's in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, uh, and this is on the day of Pentecost, and I'm, and it says, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. If, you, if you're not familiar with that, you can read Acts 2. This is when the disciples were, when the apostles and the disciples were praying, and, and the Spirit of God fell. And it says, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages. Notice the last phrase there. As the Holy Spirit did what? Gave them this ability. Okay? So how do they speak in other languages? This is a spiritual gift. It was only possible as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. What does that mean? That means if the Holy Spirit did not give them the ability then they would not have been able to do it. And see, this is the primary difference between a natural gift and a spiritual one. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. These are listings here, and these are what are typically called the sign gifts, but I want to pick out a few verses here. Verse 1 says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, reading again from the New Living Translation, Regarding your questions about the special abilities or gifts, the charismata, the spirit notice gives us. I don't want you to misunderstand this. So these are spiritual gifts that can only operate if the spirit of God is in operation in your life. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, notice, but the same spirit is the source of them all. Okay? So we saw in Acts that they spoke in other languages as the Spirit of God enabled them. And now there's different abilities, special abilities that only come by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's the same Spirit that's the source of all of these spiritual gifts. Now, Paul here lists some spiritual gifts. I'm going to read these to you. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. These are spiritual gifts. These cannot operate except the Spirit of God assists you and operates in you. If he doesn't, this stops. Uh, verse 12, verse uh, chapter 12, verse 7. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. Okay? To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. Um, to another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. Certain translations may say a word of uh, wisdom or word of knowledge, okay? That's that's what they're referring to. I'm not going to go into what they are because that's another session, but just giving you a general idea. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. Okay? So these are those sign gifts. Someone asked last week about revelatory gifts. These are those types of revelatory or sign gifts. And this, these 
only function as the spirit of God functions or flows in you. Okay, so you have to understand that. If the spirit of God is not enabling you to do this, you can't, okay? The spirit of God does not give you the ability to heal someone, you can't. The spirit of God does not give you a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge or discernment or the ability to prophesy or the ability to speak in other, other languages or tongues. Or If the spirit of God does not give that to you, then you cannot operate in that gift. And that's the primary difference between the natural and the spiritual. Natural, you can operate with or with or the help of the Holy Spirit. Spiritual, you can't. If you don't do it, it ain't gonna happen, all right? <laughs> Put it that way. So then the question is, how do you balance the two, right? How do you balance your spiritual gift and your natural gift? And so here's, I wanna give you some, some thoughts here. Natural gifts can help you accomplish natural things, but also when they're anointed, they can help you accomplish spiritual things. So your natural gifts, you can use them in the world. You can use them to earn a living. You can use them to get a career. You can use them to, um, and, and all these different types of purposes. So for example, if you're a creative mind, maybe you're an artistic mind, you could use that to become an engineer or a chef or, or a designer. Maybe you're gifted with numbers and math and you wanna go into accounting or, or um, be a, a finance or something like that. Um, maybe you're good at teaching, so you wanna be a trainer or a coach or a, 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 a corporate trainer or something like that. In other words, you can take the natural gift that God has given you, you can go out into the workplace and earn a living using the natural gift, the thing that you do well, um, in the workplace or in the world, if you want to use that terminology, um, to think about and, and generate income. That's what I'm talking about. So think about it. Paul was a tent maker, right? He was an apostle, but he was a tent maker. And there were certain times where he used that ability to make tents to support his ministry. Okay. And so it's okay if God has given you a natural gift, there's nothing wrong with going out and using that gift in the workplace to earn a living. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You can also, however, use those natural gifts to accomplish ministry and bless the body of Christ. So if you have a natural gift, you can serve in the church. You can uh, use that within uh, other environments. You can volunteer your services. There's so many different ways you can use your natural gifts. The difference is that spiritual gifts are used to accomplish spiritual or kingdom purposes. So why does God give you a spiritual gift? Because he wants to remember in 1 Corinthians 12 so that we can, um, they're used to build up each other, to, to help each other for the common good. So spiritual gifts are used to build up and bless the body of Christ. They're used to advance the preaching of the gospel. They're used to aid in the making of disciples. Spiritual gifts come with a spiritual purpose. And while you can use a natural gift for personal gain, you should never use a spiritual gift for personal gain. You don't use spiritual gifts, in other words, like the 1 Corinthians 12 gifts to make money. So if God has given you a gift of healing, you don't go selling the gift to heal people. If God has given you the gift of prophecy, you don't ask people to send you money so you can send them a prophecy or send them a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge. That's not how it works. They're not designed for that purpose. This is an abuse of the gift. If you do that, you are abusing the gift. You should never have to pay for a prophecy or prayer or, or healing or any of that kind of stuff. Anybody's telling you that they are abusing the gift and run from those people. They are abusing the gift, okay? And chances are, because they're abusing it, they're not operating or flowing. The Holy Spirit is not flowing through them in those moments when they abuse the gift, okay? So, to answer this question now, how then do you balance this natural and spiritual gift? So here's, here's a simple answer. You flow in each gift as it's appropriate for the situation that you're in and as the Holy Spirit leads you. So in other words, spiritual gifts, right? Even though they're designed to bless the body of Christ, but they're also designed to, designed to advance the gospel, make disciples, so they can actually be used at, within the four walls of the church. But guess what? They can actually be used outside 
the four walls of the church. It could be used in the marketplace or in the community or in the workplace or in the school. Right? God can use those spiritual gifts from time to time when you're led by the Spirit <laughs> to do that. And let me give you an example. If you think about the story of Daniel in the Old Testament, Think about Daniel. Daniel was a brilliant man, really, really smart. I think that was a natural gifting that God had given him. Brilliant man, right? He was trained in Babylon, but guess what? He worked for different kings, different pagan kings, but he was also a prophet, okay? So he was in the marketplace, and yet God used him as a prophet. Now, I'm not telling you to go to your job and start prophesying over everybody. That's not what I'm telling you to do. Neither am I telling you to go and start giving out words or, <clears throat> you know, having healing services or any of that kind of stuff. I'm not saying that. What I am saying, though, it's possible maybe you have a coworker and you become close. God could give you a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom for that coworker. Um, they may ask you to pray for them. Maybe they're sick and and God may use you to pray for that person, and that person could get healed, all right? So that's using the spiritual gift in the workplace. However, you don't go to the workplace to exercise spiritual gifts, all right? So don't go going through the office, going up to your co all your coworkers, say, I got a word for you, and, and I got a word for you, and, and I got a word for you. Don't do that, okay? That's not what God wants you to do, all right? Remember this, too, and, and when it comes to spiritual gifts. The spirit of the prophet is subject to control of the prophet, okay? So, so always remember that. So it's not like, oh, this thing is just coming out. I got to do this now. No, you don't. The spirit of the prophet is under control of the prophet, okay? Now, sometimes, and here's something you have to be dangerous. This is, this is a dangerous area. When you have a natural gift that you become really good at using, sometimes you can trust that natural gift to try to accomplish what only the Holy Spirit can accomplish, okay? And remember, natural gifts can work in the world without anointing, but natural gifts cannot work in the spirit or in the kingdom of God without anointing, okay? And if you're really gifted, you can fall into this trap. Um, preachers sometimes fall into the trap. They can be gifted speakers, and instead of relying on anointing, they fall back on things that can produce emotional responses. So instead of preaching to your, to your heart and your mind, they preach to your emotions because what they're looking for is that emotional response. But here's the problem. Emotional responses, they may be nice, but they don't produce spiritual outcomes. See, if I'm going to change the, the, the person, right? God says what? You are changed. Don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind. So if I preach to get you happy, that's emotional. But if I don't preach to your mind, then there's no change or transformation that can happen because that comes by the renewing of the mind. And so regardless of what your natural gift is, the danger with natural gifts is you can become so skilled in the natural gift that you don't feel like you need to depend on the Holy Spirit. But I don't care how skilled you are, if that natural gift is going to accomplish a spiritual purpose, you need the anointing of the Holy Spirit on it, or it cannot accomplish that purpose, okay? So whether it's a natural gift or God flowing through you in a spiritual gift, make sure that you just get into the habit of depending on the Holy Spirit, whether it's using a natural or a spiritual gift. All right? Okay. Next question then. How can we figure out what our gifts are? This was a question that popped up last week. So I want to give you some things that you can use to help you identify what you're, or begin to find out what those gifts are. Let's start with natural gifts. Um, here's a, These are some things to think about. Um, what do you have a natural affinity or natural ability for, right? What are the skills that you would say come fairly easy to you, okay? Um, that's one way you can discover. Um, another way you can figure out your spiritual gift. Now, this is not any, this is not 
uh, this is just straight practical, is just try different things. I'll call it trial and error, okay? And by trial and error, what you can do is you can define what you're good at and drawn to, but you can also begin eliminating what you're not good at and what you're not really drawn to. Um, my daughter and I, yesterday, we were doing some painting, and this is like straight up painting, no like paint by numbers or anything like that. And what I discovered yesterday is I don't have a natural gift to be a painter, okay? Uh, my daughter is far more artistic and far more creative in that arena than I think I'll ever be. But that's okay. That's not my natural gift. She tends to have a more natural inclination for that. That's fine. It's an ability that she, can, that she does well. So one of the ways you can begin discovering your gifts is by trying different things. Um, right? Serving in church, for example. If you belong to a church, join a ministry. That can help you discover your gift. I promise you, if you go to church, there is a ministry that needs help. I, I don't care how big the church is, how small the church, doesn't matter. There's a ministry that needs help. And that's one way you can begin discovering what your gifts are. Um, I'll tell you this story. When I, when I was 17 years old, I was going to a, uh, this was a church I grew up in, got saved in. I was going there since I was about six years old. And um, there was a, a Sunday school class. The Sunday school class was, uh, this was the 12-year-old kids. And these kids were bad. I mean, just, just real bad. These kids were so bad that they caused the Sunday school teacher to quit. All right. And she had taught, she taught me when I was in Sunday. She had taught for years. And she said, these kids, I can't take it anymore. I'm out of here. Okay. This is how bad these kids were. And they couldn't find anybody to teach the class. And so I said, you know what? I'll teach the class. Never taught before, never thought about teaching before. I just saw the need. I said, I'll take the class. I'd never taught a class before, but I stepped up. I was 17 years old. What I discovered from that was that I actually liked it and I enjoyed it. And I discovered later, it wasn't until years later, that God had actually gifted me to do that. But it was a process of discovery. That was a uh, someone put baby's kids. Yeah, they were baby's kids. <laughs> that was a process of trial and error, stepping out and walking into something that I had no idea that I had a gifting for. But as I did it, it became evident to me years later that I had a gift. Okay. So, so sometimes that's the way you discover it. Um, sometimes people see it in you before you see it in yourself. So it's okay. Ask people, hey, what 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 giftings do you see in me? Um, you know, my wife and I, when we talk to people, we we see giftings in them, and people have seen giftings in us. And sometimes you see it in others, see it before you do. And then there's one other thing I'll share with you is you can use something called the gifts test. And and in tomorrow's email, I'm going to send out a link that you can use to do a gifts test. So watch out for that. Uh, in the email that I sent out on Fridays, all right? So those are some simple ways to identify natural gifts. Remember, God has given every single one of you an ability to do certain things well. By his grace, he's put it in you. For spiritual gifts, it's a little bit different because they have to, first of all, come from the Holy Spirit. Um, second of all, it's okay to desire them. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says, let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. So sometimes the Spirit of God will give you these gifts, but you won't know that until they begin to operate. So it's not like you can just walk down the street and all of a sudden say, I got the gift of healing. All right. It, that's not really how it works. Um, you might be praying for someone and they get healed. Okay. And does that mean you have the gift of healing? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but then you pray for someone else and they get healed. And then you pray for somebody else and they get healed. Then you might start thinking, I don't know, maybe God has given me a gift of healing. Okay. So the, the, the gifts that the spirit gives, um, you really only recognize them when they are in operation. And if they're in operation once, okay. And if they keep operating, then you start think, saying, okay, maybe this is a gift that God has given me. Okay. So that's how the, 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 the natural gifts work and the spiritual gifts work. Now, here's where I want to end tonight. I want to give you some things, some 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 guidelines cuz this was another question that popped up. How do you find your purpose? Okay? Um and uh 
I, I, I wrote a book called The Pursuit of Purpose, which shows you 11 ways God leads you into your purpose. So feel free to read that if you like. Um, but there's some other things I want you to think about as you are trying to figure out how do you find your purpose, okay? And I want to give you some, just a few things to, to consider, okay? And I think this can help you. These are in no particular order, so this is not like of most importance to least. This is just random, but there's five things I'm going to give you here. The first thing in finding your purpose is to follow your gifts. And why do I say that? If you remember what we talked about last week, and again, if you didn't see last week, go back and watch it because we covered this in depth. But the gift that God has given you are given to fulfill your purpose. So the first thing I would encourage you to do is follow your gifts. What has God gifted you to do? Because in that gifting, your purpose is wrapped up in there somehow. Okay. So begin identifying what those gifts are. Um, the second thing I would say is follow your passions. What are some of the things that you love to do and enjoy doing that that give you uh, a sense of, of fulfillment, right? What are those things? Follow your passions. Um, believe it or not, I don't know if you realize this, but I like teaching. I like talking and speaking and, and you might not realize that. I don't know if it comes through or not, I don't know, but follow your passions. There's something I'm passionate about. Um, so follow your passions. Third thing is follow your dreams or your vision. In other words, sometimes God puts something in you that you just can't escape from. It keeps coming back. I was talking to a friend of mine recently, and um, about nine years ago, he started his own business. And I was just having this conversation with him literally a week ago. And he said, you know, what I'm doing now has been a vision and a dream of mine since I was a teenager. He's now a lot older than that, but he was following something that God had put in his heart as a dream or a vision when he was just a teenager. And now he's a grown man um, and, and he's following, it took a while to get there, but he's following the thing that was a dream or vision that he had from very young. All right, so follow your gifts, follow your passions, follow your dreams or your vision. I would even say this, the next one is follow your burdens, okay? What do I mean by that? What are the things that that just, just burden you to a point where you want to see them change? Where it's like, you know what? I just can't sit here and allow that to continue. It just bothers me. I have to, I feel like I have to do something about it. Is there something that burdens you? Now, I want you to be careful between burden and what I'm going to call outrage, all right? Because there could be things that upset you, things that anger you, things that get you outraged, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a burden. All right. Because sometimes when you react out of rage or anger or being upset, then your response is not change. Your response is revenge. And, and that's not a burden. OK, so what burdens you? What is it that just sits at you that says, you know what? I see this and I got to I feel like I have to do something about it. OK, what burdens you? For me, one of the things that burdens me is I have a heart, a burden for discipleship and helping people grow in their walk with God and helping them move forward and take steps forward in their journey. That's why we started the Bible study club uh, three years ago. It was just for that reason, we wanted to help people move forward in their walk with the Lord. So what burdens you? So follow your gifts, follow your passions, follow your dreams or visions, follow your burdens. And then the last one I'm gonna say is follow your story or your experience, all right? Um, in other words, what has God done in you, right? Or what is what are the experiences that you've had that could be a blessing to someone else? Is there something in your life that has happened that God could use to minister or help or assist or somebody else, okay? And in those things, you may be able to find they will help, okay? in assisting in leading to, to God or helping you find your purpose. Amen. So let's pray. 
Father, I just say thank you for every single person here tonight. I pray that they receive something from this tonight. And God, I pray as we are evaluating our gifts and our talents and our callings and our purpose, that you would begin to make these things clear to us so that for one simple reason, so that we can do and be the people that you've called us to be. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, now, before we move forward, I just want to say this one thing. If you're listening tonight and, you know, the, the most important thing that God wants in your life is a personal relationship with you. That can't happen unless you go through salvation through Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except they come through me. And so if you want to have that personal relationship, which, by the way, is the greatest relationship you will ever have in this world, um, you have to come through Christ. But the good news is it's not that hard to do. If, you, if that's you and you, you're feeling that tug in your heart, pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, today I invite you into my heart. I confess all my sins before you. And I ask you to come into my life, change me, and make me yours forever. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. See, simple prayer like that, prayed with faith, you can now enter into personal relationship with the Lord. And if you've prayed that prayer, we want to reach out to you. We Actually, we want you to reach out to us because we want to help you get started in your new journey. Uh, simply send us an email, and you can send it to hello at the Bible Study Club. Dot com. And when you do that, we will just get in touch with you. And we just want to simply get you started in this new journey the right way. And when you send us that email, either in the subject line or somewhere in the body of the email, just simply write, I prayed the prayer. And when you do that, we will absolutely reach out to you. Amen. 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 All right. So we're going to turn to questions. By the way, if you got something out of us, just give me a thumbs up in the chat. Let me know that uh, this was encouragement to you or blessing to you. Um, all right. So we got some questions. Good stuff here. So this is a question um, coming from Frank. Is the gift of healing still operating today? Well, the answer to the question, Frank, is it all depends on who you talk to. <laughs> who you ask the question to. What do I mean by that? Let me, let me try to make this as simple as possible. There are some people who are in the, the Christian faith that don't believe that the gifts of the spirit that you see operating in 1 Corinthians 12 are in operation today. They believe God can still heal. They don't believe the gift of healing is still in effect. There are um, Those are called cessationists, by the way. That's a technical term. Um, there are others who are called continuationists who believe that the gifts of the spirit that operate operated listed in 1 Corinthians 12 are in operation today, okay? So there's two camps. And by the way, the camp you in does not define whether you're a Christian or not, it does not. So that's, that's not an issue of whether you're a believer or not. It's simply a matter of what you believe or not believe, but this does not define whether you're a Christian. So depending on who you ask, some will say that they're not in operation. That, that makes them a cessationist, meaning they ceased in the first century or after the last apostle died. Then there's a continuationist who would say, no, they are in operation today. Me, I fall into the camp of continuationists, that I do believe that the gifts of the Spirit as operated in, for, as listed rather in 1 Corinthians 12, are still in operation today. All right. Now, someone else may have a different opinion on that. That's okay. All right. This is not an issue of whether it's a, a faith or um, you're a Christian or not Christian. If you don't believe in gifts of the spirit, that does not make you not a Christian. And if you do, it does not make you not. All right. So it has nothing to do with that. It's simply a matter of what you believe. So I believe, yes, some, someone else might not believe that. And so it depends on who you talk to. All right. So hopefully that helps you, Frank. If not, let me know. All right. Let's see. We've got a question here from Sharon. Can a believer be given more than one spiritual gift? And the answer to that question is yes. Um, Remember, the Spirit of God gives to each one as he sees fit, all right? So some people can have more than one spiritual gift. That is possible. All right. Uh, Frank Gibson, what does being anointed mean? Good question. Um, simply, anointing means 
when the spirit of God, I'll, I'll try to give you a, a spirit of God comes alongside of you and helps you to accomplish something greater than what you could accomplish by yourself. So I'll give you an example. Um, and I'll just use the, the singer. Uh, we'll go back to the singer. And let's say someone can sing really, really well and they come to church or maybe they don't sing that well. Maybe, right? Maybe they're not the, the, the top of the line singer, but they have a good voice and so they sing. So what the Spirit of God can do is take what that person is giving as a gift, they're singing or serving or teaching, whatever they're doing, and he can take those words and add greater meaning so that they impact the hearer more than that um, in, a, in a greater way, all right? So maybe they're singing, but the words are penetrating the hearts of those who hear it in a greater way. Maybe it's causing conviction. Maybe it's causing um, uh, someone to just uh, a greater revelation of God's love, or maybe it's causing them to, to weep because they begin thinking about God's faithfulness. That happens when the Spirit of God, in a sense, adds his touch to whatever that person is doing, so now it has greater impact, okay? So that's kind of what anointing is. Um, all right. Can a gift of exhortation be a natural gift and a spiritual gift also? Um, and the answer to that question is yes. Remember, a natural gift can accomplish a spiritual purpose when the Holy Spirit anoints it, okay? So that's how that can happen. Um, I find joy in outreach ministries, sharing my relationship with Jesus. Is that a spiritual gift? Um, is that a spiritual gift? I don't know if I'd call that a spiritual gift. I think that would, might fall more in line with purpose, okay? Maybe that's something that God is directing you or moving you towards the ability to or the desire to go out and outreach. That's more evangelism, okay? So that kind of falls more in line with with a purpose than a gift, okay? <clears throat> All right, we got some more in here. Lots of questions tonight. All right, so it's okay if, okay. So the question is, do you lose your spiritual gifts if you don't use them? Um, again, my answer to that question is no, because we looked at the God's gifts and call are without repentance. Okay, so I don't think you lose them. Now, they can lie dormant where they're not in operation, um, but I don't believe you lose the gift if you don't use them, all right? Okay? Um, but they can lie dormant. They can get stale or rusty, and and maybe you don't hear God like you used to, or stuff like that. All that can happen. Um, is it possible our natural gifts are given to us to take care of our family? Absolutely, quite possibly. Um, that God would give you a gift to use to take care of your family. Absolutely, that is possible. And um, to give an example, a gift to decorate. Sure, that could be an artistic or creative thing. Remember, our verse of the week, God, by his grace, has given to everyone the ability to do certain things well. So maybe that's something that you do well, and you can use that to earn a living. Remember, we talked about that earlier. So you can use your natural gifts in the workplace uh, to, to, to follow after career and, and support your family. That is absolutely uh, um, a reality, okay? Uh, let's see, there's something else. How do you process the speaking in tongues? Um, I'm not sure what the question means. How do you process the speaking in tongues? Could you give me a, a little bit more clarity on what do you mean by that? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by how do you process. So that's, um, if you could give us a little bit more clarity um, and uh, we're glad to answer that question. Why do you think it often takes so long to discover your spiritual gifts? Now remember, spiritual gifts, as we're referring to them, are coming out of 1 Corinthians 12. So the first thing is that, uh, number one, you have to believe that those gifts are in operation. And then number two, they come as the Spirit of God enables you. So it's not really on you to discover it. It's on the Spirit of God to enable it in you. And then once he enables it, 
then it flows. So kind of it kind of you discover it kind of as it happens um, and it continues to happen. And you'll be thinking, OK, maybe this is a gift that God has given me. All right. So hopefully that helps. Um, and to the person who had the tongues question, please, um, if you could clarify a little bit more what you mean, and I'll be glad to uh, to answer that. Look at this. Hey, <laughs> look who just popped up on the screen. <laughs> this is Diana. If you never met Diana, this is my wife, Diana. So she's always in the background typing away and popping up questions on the screen. I'm not doing all this stuff. She's doing this. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Because I, I kind of had a few technical issues here. I'm not sure if you can hear me out there. But yeah, hello there. Yes. It's so good to be back on the camera. Um, I hope you're not hearing me through my, my husband. Yeah, you're good. You're I'm good. Good. Okay, awesome. Thank you, June. I see your thumbs up. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's good to be out here. But you have another question. Oh, what are, your, what spiritual are gifts? your spiritual gifts? Um, well, I'm going to go by First Corinthians chapter 12, mm -hmm. and I say this humbly. Um, I don't usually talk about this publicly, but um, <laughs> God has given me the gift of tongues. God has also given me um, the gift of prophecy from time to time. That doesn't always happen. Um, uh, so those are two that I am certain of. Um, so, but I don't, I don't talk about those very often. So, <laughs> but yeah, those, those are two of my spiritual gifts. Uh, more natural gifts, I was going to be able to teach and encourage. I think those are two things that God has put in me, um, serving those types of things. So, uh, so I have something to share with you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you, you do have that natural ability to, to speak. You do like talking. You talk a lot. He talks a lot. When I met him, he was a speaker. And back when I met him, he was working at DeVry University. That's right. I think he did what you did, what, 14 years at DeVry? 12. 12, 12, 12 years, years 12. at DeVry University. So while you were doing your natural gift and one of your spiritual gifts, because God is giving you the anointing to do it, I got a message. So Juan sent me a message, and I'm going to read it mm. to you on air. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right now. Okay. So it, it reads like this. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Haynes. Hope you are all staying safe in the pandemic season. And I'm just going to leave her name out, mm. you know, for privacy. I attended DeVry for a short time. Hmm. I was very new in this country, and I was determined to achieve the American dream. Hmm. Mr. Haynes, at that time, was one of the representatives oh at the gosh. school. <laughs> um, she says, hope you can remember me. I lived in Brooklyn at the time. I'm mm. originally from Trinidad and Tobago. I enjoy your program. I try to catch it when I can wow. based on my busy lifestyle. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So how many people did you speak to oh, gosh. while you were um, working at DeVry? Geez, we used to do... Uh, what did you do? Well, I used to, to do um, career workshops for high school students. I would talk to, literally, we would do sometimes 12 to 15 presentations a week. Uh, and we would do that like eight months a year. And I did that for 12 years. So if you just do some math, I, I've literally talked to thousands of, of high school kids. And the first part of my career, I was also uh, recruiting and, and admissions. So I would also help students, you know, go through the interview process and help them get started and, and derive that was that they were interested in going. So, um, so man, I've talked to thousands of, of that's, that's, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm speechless for me. <laughs> Wow, he is, That's pretty ladies awesome. and gentlemen, it's a moment. He That's is awesome. speechless. I'm, I'm amazed at that. So. Awesome. And wow. um, I remember when his time at DeVry had come to an end and, you know, he was looking for a new job. And, you know, I said, well, so what do you want to do? And, you know, he's talking to these high school students about their passion. I said, well, what is your passion? He says, I love to speak. 
if I could do anything for the rest of my life, I would be a speaker. That's and here true. it is. That is very now, God true. has also um, anointed him in his natural gift to teach Bible study. So amen to that. Amen. Amen. I wow. see the chat is like blowing, blowing up over up. here. <laughs> Sorry, friends. I see the chat. I'm gonna have to scroll back up and read some of these um some of these comments here. But um, awesome discussion. I've been enjoying these um, two sessions on gifts. That's a question that many people always have, especially mm -hmm. if you're a believer. I I took the gifts test. Yes. It's coming out tomorrow, so look for your email. Do you want to you share what yours are and um, you share what mine is? You, um, I can't. I, you know, I did this a while ago, so I, I can only remember a few of them. One was... Well, definitely um, one is teaching. I'll teaching, help you. Teaching, pastoring, mm -hmm. apostleship. Uh, I think one was leadership, and I can't remember what the other one was. So, um, So from this point forward, you can call me... Pastor Apostle, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm joking, don't do that. Please don't do that. No, 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 don't do that. Uh, but those are so right here. Right. Sure I can't remember. Right. Okay, so I get asked mine often, so I definitely know them. And I I did this on giftstest.com. I think it's dot .com. Yeah, right? we'll yeah, it's it's .com. You'll, you'll send the right link out in the email tomorrow. But mine is leadership, administration, Leadership, administration, faith, discernment, and exhortation. Mm -hmm. Those are my spiritual gifts, according to giftstest.com. And many people tell me that they do see all of these gifts in me. So, yeah, I think it's pretty accurate. But yeah, pretty cool. I am interesting to, interested to hear some of your tests, your gift tests results. So I'm going to be looking for them in the chat next week. Um, so I hope that you get the opportunity to do the gift tests and share them with me. Yeah, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. And it's free. That's right. Yeah, it's free. Cost. It's free. And what else is free and why I popped up on the screen is our Elisha study. <laughs> Ladies, oh my gosh, we are four days away from starting our Oh, oh my gosh, our Elisha study. And why I know it's four days away is because we're starting on Monday and Monday is our daughter's birthday. And mm -hmm. every day she gets up and she goes, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. <laughs> four more days before my birthday. <laughs> so she is kind of like my automatic countdown timer for this study. And I just want to say thank you Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you ladies that signed up. I, I, I just want you to know a little insider secret. Did Do you know that you crashed our website? You absolutely did. The website went down, our technicians were on the line with Clarence, they were trying to get it back up because so many of you rushed in to register for Elijah. My husband equated it to like a sale at Marshall on <laughs> shoe shoes, <laughs> a shoe sale. <sighs> what does he know about shoe shopping, huh? But thank you so much. Um, ladies, I am excited. I can't stop talking about it in the house. Um, it's going to be about just under 60 of you or just a little over 60 of you that's going to be doing this study with us. And um, some of you would have received your welcome email yesterday that would have information in it on how to um, access the portal. We have all the videos and all the materials outside of the study guide on the portal for you to access. So check your email. If for some reason you don't see an email um, from us with, the, with your um, information about joining the portal, you can send me an email. Um, send it to diana at clarencehaines.com and I will be sure to look into it. I'm actually going to be checking each and every single registration beginning tomorrow just to make sure that all of you have access and that you are in and you're seeing the videos and you are seeing um, the, the downloads. Hmm. But 
everyone who is registered also in that email you will get you will see a link to a zoom welcome party tomorrow evening friday may 7th and let me just put that up here i can multitask too there we go tomorrow we're going to have our welcome party it's going to be on zoom you don't have to join but i would love for you to join so i can put some faces to some of these names that i see always in the chat and um you know it's informal we're just going to be saying hello we're going to be you know just tell me where where you're logging in from which country which which state you know we just want to say hello and i want to show you how to access the portal if you're having problems there and how to navigate through the portal i just go over some housekeeping tips with you on the study so a little birdie told me that my husband is gonna be doing the study at home with me so i'm really looking forward to dragging him along I'm not going to be on the he's study. He's not going to be gonna, in the study. Just, the just, study. just get that straight. He's not in the, in the study. He, he, he just I'm wants just to peek out, peek in, in my book and, and see what's going on and stuff like that. Because some of the men I heard have been asking questions about, well, why is this study for the women and what happened to the men? So I'm going to leave that question up for him to take care of. Um, so... That's for you, honey. Sure. That's for you. No problem. No problem. Now let's see what's going on in the chat. A couple of things I saw. Um, right. And, oh, uh, boy. <laughs> it's blowing up over here. I'm just scrolling back up, and I'm going to try to answer some of the questions. So you sure. can continue. Um, um, two things really quick. There was an answer. Um, the question about tongues is, like I said, I do believe in the gifts of the Spirit. So... Yes, I do believe in that it's for today. And maybe we'll, we'll do a teaching on that at some point in the future. But um, so I believe all the gifts of the Spirit are in operation today. Okay? Um, so that's it. And then I saw someone who mentioned, was asking about what the Elijah study is. It's a, it's a Bible study that's done by Priscilla Shira. So my wife and Jamie are going to be facilitating the study. And um, we had mentioned it uh, was that not, it was two weeks ago we mentioned it. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, it's full for this one, it's closed, but uh, the chances are we'll, we'll do another round later this year, most likely in the fall. So if you miss this one, um, it's okay. Uh, we, love, we still love you. <laughs> we'll probably do another one in the fall as well. But um, so that's where, that's where we are. Um, and Shay, I saw your response. So we will, we will add you to, to the list, so uh, so that response there. Um, listen, June, we always, listen, I'm from Barbados. My teachers said the same thing, that I was talking too much. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> hey, a natural gift that God can also put the anointing on, and mm -hmm. it can be a spiritual gift too. So you go, June, keep going, keep on going. Mm -hmm. Keep talking, okay? Awesome. Um, as you're doing that, I want to make one other announcement. So um, within the next couple of weeks, most likely, uh, maybe one or two weeks, I'm not sure the exact date, but we're going to be uh, shifting our study. Right now, we're streaming on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we're going to be shifting to streaming strictly on YouTube. Um, and the main reason why is going to give, allow us to do even more things and um, give you guys a better experience than what you're experiencing now. But I want to make that announcement so that if you are watching on Facebook, don't worry, we're not getting rid of the Bible Study Club page, and that'll still be there. We'll still post a link in the Bible Study Club, so you know, that link will always be there. But as far as the live streaming, we're going to transfer that all over to YouTube. So if you're watching on Facebook, um, I would encourage you starting next week to start shifting and start watching it on YouTube because we're going to go exclusively on YouTube. We're not sure the exact date, but it's going to happen soon. So we just want to give you a notice up front so you can start making that transition. And there's no, you don't have to log in to YouTube. You just have to go to our page and you can watch and participate exactly like you're doing on Facebook, you can do the exact same thing on YouTube. So I uh, just wanted to throw that out there um, and let you know that that, that is coming. 
Um, but I will catch you by surprise. All right. All he's really trying to say is Facebook friends, get over to YouTube. And while you're over there, make sure you subscribe to our channel, okay? That's what he's just trying to say. Right? So that's it. So we're going <laughs> on to YouTube. So, um, awesome. But um, it's not because we don't like Facebook. It just, it'll give us a better experience for you. And that's what we're doing it for. So, awesome. Yep. Well, I before we, we wrap this up, I just want to say happy Mother's Day in advance to all yes. the wonderful yes. mothers that are out there that are joining on our broadcast and to also all to, to the mother figures too, because there are a lot of women out there who are not natural mothers by birth, but they are definitely mother figures in the lives of a lot of, of little ones out there. So I just want to say a big happy Mother's Day to you all. I pray that you will get to uh, put your feet up and relax and you know, enjoy it to the fullest. Amen to that. Yes. And happy Mother's Day to you, your mother. Well, thank you, sir, <laughs> for making me a mother. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you are out there in the social media space, be sure to follow our page on Facebook and on Instagram at the Bible study club. Um, every day we share a lot of inspiring script um, quotes and scriptures from the Bible as well of, as a lot of the articles that um, my husband writes on crosswalk and Bible study tools. And we also share articles from some of our friends right here in the Bible study club to uh, pastor Michael Jakes. He's also a writer over at Bible study tools as well. And so you might've seen his articles up there. So be sure to, to like all of our social channels and be sure to check out the articles on crosswalk and Bible study tools um, from all of our peoples here in the Bible study club. So, and uh, one other thing is next week, you know, we're going to be looking at Matthew 25. Um, I believe it's Matthew 25, yes. Mm -hmm. It's the, the, we're going to be looking at the parable of the talents. So if you want to read that in advance, but we're also going to connect that back to, to gifts and reward and spiritual gifting. So we're, we're going to wrap, I think we're going to wrap up this series next week. So um, I think this has been a blessing to you. I'm, I'm enjoying this and uh, we're going to bring all this together, looking at Matthew 25. So there's your sneak peek and your assignment for next week. Awesome. Yep. You want to wrap? Sure. So uh, I just want to say thank you all for, for joining us here uh, this week in the Bible City Club. Uh, we thank you for the just the fact that you spend an hour with us each week. So um, on behalf of my wife, everybody here, if you want to learn more about our ministry, go to clarinthings.com or thebiblestudyclub.com. And until next week, I will see you next Thursday in the Bible Study Club. Bye, friends.